Hey, it's Matt Pinville and Josh Bernstein, and welcome to Rockville 2023 with our fellow Jersey brother, Jay Weinberg from Slipknot. Jay, what's up, man? Hey, I'm good. Thank I'm, you guys for having me. Great yeah. to see you, brother. It's yeah. so good to see you. You know, man, and look, you know, obviously I've been seeing you since you were a teenager playing live, right? That's right, yeah. And you know, one of the coolest things was I remember you being your uh, dad backstage at like Alkaline Trio show uh -huh. with like Mike Kim when you were... I remember that. You know? Yeah, I remember that well. When yeah. you were a teen, which was uh, like really cool, but I mean, you always playing the drums and I got to see that time that you played with Bruce and that like blew me away. You were there. I didn't yeah. know you were there. Oh, yeah. cool. Awesome. Which was really, that, you know, obviously I'm such a huge Bruce fan and, you know, I've interviewed your dad before. You mm -hmm. know, this is a whole Jersey connection. So yeah. watching you play with him, like that was like one of the highlights of the night for me. I thought it was right so on, cool. Man. Well, thank you. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, I've got, we've been, I've been, we've been at the same shows probably since I was like a very young person and, and starting, you saw it kind of all happening. I'm sure of like, I mean, when I was young and going to shows in New Jersey, that Alkaline Trio show, for example, that was my education. Like that was my my musical high school and college. Like that was everything to me. So uh, so yeah, you you were right there as I was kind of just putting putting all this stuff together. So yeah, you know, it brought us here. Kind Which of is so great, right? I mean, well, I, I feel like you can't like underestimate how you know, like you said, like not every parent would take their their kid to an Alkaline Trio show. We, we had a similar story. We met at a I I was at a Mastodon show and I saw. Max and I was I remember saying what are you doing here <laughs> and he said I'm here with my I'm here with my kid and we met outside you know and um you know I was like man my parents took you know my parents took, I saw Billy Joel the Beach Boys but not they didn't like take me to my own stuff that I liked you know they took me yeah. to their stuff that they liked so well, that, that was, was pretty rad. That was the cornerstone, and still is to this day, the cornerstone of how our lives intersect. And it's, you know, it's obviously with music and with drumming, um, but we're just fans, you know? Yeah. And, and so I latched on to that and the enthusiasm for searching out music and stuff from my parents. And I was really fortunate enough to where, you know, my dad was, he was doing the, the TV show, so he'd be home yeah. or, you know, if, at least for the weekend. And I could probably, I could just take the train up when I was like 12 years old to New York and we'd go to Irving Plaza, we'd go to CBGB's and Roseland. And I ran him kind of ragged going to see all these bands, I think. But he he was, was, and he was taping the late night show like yeah, late afternoon. Exactly, yeah, but he was game for it. And, and he was totally into checking out all this stuff because it, yeah. it was a breath of fresh air for him. He got to hear music and, and new styles that he probably may have not been introduced to otherwise. And so that's like the cornerstone of our, you know, our bond is, is through that. I mean, to be honest, the first time I met Slipknot was because they were on the, right. the Conan show promoting their first record and my dad was like, wow, you guys are crazy. My kid's going to love you guys. And, and that's, <laughs> just, how, that's how that relationship started. Yeah, you're playing with which is, that is so cool the way that comes full circle. And this is a great, right, if that. I'm not mistaken, it's a great photo of you in costume as a kid with the band, right? That's right. Yeah, it was uh, October, it was Halloween night in 2001. Uh, the band's second album had just right. come out. And before that, we had gone to see them play at OzFest just the summer before. Uh, and so we were like, oh, you know, hey, and next time you guys come through town, you know, we'd love to come to the show again. You guys are awesome. And it was Halloween night, so I ended up dressing up like Corey for Halloween. <laughs> My buddy dressed up as Joey. His parents wouldn't let him go to the show. And, uh, and then that night I came to the show and I just hadn't taken off my costume. And luckily somebody was there with like kind of a fly on the wall you know, video camera. It's just such a great full circle, yeah. <laughs> right? It's so beautiful. And I, I came to see, it's funny, I came to um, Homedale to mm -hmm. see you perform. Um, and I could see your dad watching. I, I saw Jerry Only came out from the Misfits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is, a, I don't know if you, you probably did not see this, but I watched him pull up in his like Corvette. Oh, in the Misfits mobile. Yeah, it's so cool. He took out Misfits branded, um, he pulled across three spots. Like really obnoxiously, yeah, and then took out Misfits branded cones and surrounded his car with them. And I was like, I can't believe this guy's doing this. This is incredible. I, I actually I kind it. of love that. Oh, I think yeah. it's, it's the coolest cool thing I've ever seen. Ever. I'd be yeah, lying yeah, if I yeah, said I that I didn't great. take a picture standing in front, oh, like yeah. posing yeah. in front that, of the Misfits. Mobile. That you have to have <laughs> it like, so in sick. your collection. But growing up at Home Dell, must be like you know, and I'm, you know, knowing that you were such a fan. Like I said, I, uh, I remember maybe the second time I met you, we were we went to one of the tapings, and uh, Braun Daler was there, great drummer, and of course Terry Bozio. I think it was yeah, also, uh -huh, I don't even remember uh -huh. the context of what was even going on, but, yeah. um, you know, I, I have to think now, here we are, you're like a drum, you're winning drum awards, you're, yeah. these kids are growing up, 
I, you know, discovering your drumming. It's, I'm just, it's so cool, right? It's, yeah, it's incredible. It's I, just, well, I was a guest on Conan, you know, it was on NBC, you know, your dad was mm-hmm. there. I remember that bonding moment, saying that to your dad, like, it's so cool that I'm here, you know, and, and that was yeah. a big moment for me. Yeah. But I got to just, I want to talk to you too about how the whole thing, the evolution of how you ended up becoming the member of Slipknot, because you were such a fan. Yeah, well, you know, from an early age, from that early age, of we met when I was 10 years old, when uh, when I got to see them on OzFest 2001, I was 10. And uh, what I, what really struck me about, you know, my new friendship with these guys was they didn't treat me like a kid or like I was less than or anything. They saw, they were the first people who truly, I felt like saw me eye to eye, even though they were adults and they were sure. doing this crazy thing in front of me, they were very real and welcomed me into this, you know, this family that the band has created since its inception that's grown, you know, exponentially. But I really felt like this bond and it was meaningful to me because even though I was 10 years old, I felt like I was respected by these guys who are doing something that I was so impressed by. And, and I felt like I was in the, in the fold of something very special. Um, so, you know, as time would go on, I got a little bit older. I'd come out to, you know, they toured all the time. So they were constantly coming to the area, you know, to the tri-state area. So I'd go to a bunch of shows in, in the area, just trying to like absorb as much of it as I could because it meant so much to sure. me. And that put me on a path of learning about, you know, I'm going to check out the opening bands. I'm going to see the opening bands when they come back to town and, you know, doing the research that sure. all of us music fans do. Um, and then it, it came to a point where, you know, I started touring full time and our, our friendship kind of, you know, Slipknot was doing its thing. And I started to kind of do stuff and I filled in for my dad with Bruce, which was a huge undertaking at the time. Um, Not many people the, have drummed for Bruce Springsteen and yeah. Madball. Yeah. Not I think I, I think yeah. I might be the only one. Are you the only, uh, I think yeah. I might be. Yeah. I was thinking about that's, but, that is, but maybe, maybe dad, not because Madball has had Mad like a hundred drummers. So. Yeah. And <laughs> so, so we're not really not. sure who's <laughs> on that <laughs> list. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so we just stayed friends over the you know over the last twenty something odd years, and uh, when the band you know they needed a drummer, they hit me up. I was the first person in the world to to right. know that. Uh, that they needed a drummer they were they were like your family to us because we we had been friends up until that point for probably like 15 years or wow. something and uh and they were kind of like all right there's a drum set do you know any songs <laughs> and uh and we just we ripped through like 20 25 songs something like that wow. and then the next day we started working on a re- what became you know our first record together yeah, yeah. I, I, I just love that story absolutely yeah and they're a fair, very family based band there's that whole connection too with Clown and, and his son and yeah. Corey and his son. So there's it's, it's got that thing where there's that love and respect for family too, like you and your dad. You know, yes. And, just, and I think that's one of the coolest things. Yeah, it is very kind much. And that family dynamic where, you know, there's that, there's a connection and care and that kind of, you know. It's a culture thing, yeah. yeah. Uh, we keep referencing, you know, especially with how Knotfest has evolved to the point where it is now. Uh, it is very much, you know, Slipknot has pioneered a culture that's that's really grown into something that's, far larger than the band itself. Yeah. So, you know, myself coming in, I knew that they knew that they would want someone who they didn't have to walk by the hand and be like, this is what our band's all about and hope you can kind of keep yeah. up or whatever. It was like, they want someone who knows the band in and out, knows every detail about every single song. They don't have to inform me about whatever. We can just start playing together and just go. And that's what we've done. Yeah, I think it's, it's phenomenal. What was, what, what was, what was more, more what was what was more terrifying? I don't, I'm not. Maybe they weren't terrifying at all. But playing for Bruce the first time or doing that first Slipknot show, I always wanted to ask. Oh boy, both very <laughs> memorable experiences in my life yeah. for sure. Um, yeah. I, I mean, with Bruce, I, I credit Bruce and my dad for coming together for that. You know, that idea to have me cover for him. In that they took a shot really in the true dark, like. I had played, my biggest show I had played at that time was maybe in front of 50 people max, wow. you yeah. know? So they really took a shot in the dark only because I, I got up on stage to play one song and that was yeah. like, that was the litmus test. And then when this scheduling conflict happened with my dad, Bruce was like, do you think Jay would be able to learn 
400 other songs and, yeah. and do this on a longer term basis. Yeah. And so they gave me that opportunity. And, and that, um, I mean, that there was like, that's my literal blood family, as well as people who I've known since I was, you know, sure. before I had memory for, you yeah. know, I've known these people my whole life. Um, coming into Slipknot was similar in a way, but everything was amplified where, yeah. you know, the intensity, yes, the Bruce shows are about like four hours long, but it's not, you're not doing, you know, gymnastics on the drum set for that necessarily. In a way I was, but in a way this is, just everything is just turned, all the dials are just turned up right. completely. So, yeah. and I knew that, um, and I had joined the band about a year before our first show together. So, you know, we made a record and we're jamming and we had that kind of, uh, kind of a runway before us, before our first show. But yeah, man, I mean, nothing, I, I've said it before, but it's like nothing, I could have had years and years and years to prepare for my first Slipknot show. There was truly nothing that could prepare for that first moment when the curtain goes up, we're in our mask, we're in our outfits, everybody's there. That was like the turnkey moment, you know, especially after like a year of knowing, you know, I'm waiting for that moment. When, right. What's going to happen for this first show? What's it going to smell like? What's it going to feel like? All this stuff and just trying to, to best prepare myself for that moment. And there was no preparing for that moment. It really was, as the guys had described to me, every night is like you're just dropped out of an airplane and you just have to figure it out. And, uh, and so that first night certainly was special in that regard. And I feel like we've just built it over the last yeah. 10 years, you know? And now you guys are, you know, putting in all this great music. I feel like the last two records are um, so strong, you know, and, you. and the videos, everything about it is just is, is fantastic. And, it's funny, we've been interviewing bands here all day and every single person's like, well, I'm here to see Slipknot, I'm here to see Slipknot, yeah. you know, and a lot of, you know, Hardy was here, you know, big country star, uh, Bloody Wood, who's here from India. Yep, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is their first time ever seeing them, they, you know, they idolized Slipknot in India, the first time they're ever going to get to see them tonight, so. That's awesome. Um, they're going to be, they're going to be thrown up in an airplane. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> feel. As well. Yeah. Well, uh, Jay, you know, we can't thank you enough. I know you, uh, you know, obviously have a busy night ahead of us. Yep. Yeah. It's like Springsteen, right? You have to do like five <laughs> hours worth of music and, and maybe about an hour and a half. Uh, yeah. It's probably the same, right? It's, it's probably... Yeah. It's, it's, a it's that all way. that energy just compressed into, right. you know. Yeah. The, the way I equate it is that both of those things takes 100% of everything you got. So in that regard, they're very similar yeah. uh, in that by the end of the night, you're just completely drained of all energy. And that's, that's why we do it. Yeah, because we love it so much, right? Because yeah. you do, and that's great. Totally. Jay, thanks for doing this, Thank man. you. Yeah, thank so you good to see you, you yeah, know? My Likewise. pleasure as always. Guys, Jay Weinberg, Slipknot. They're going to be headlining tonight and welcome to Rockville and many more festivals to come, so please check them out. And obviously, when you get a chance, check out Jay's drumming. It's ridiculously good. Awesome. Thank you guys so much.